In this video, I want to talk about putting specimens into a scientific research collection. So these are two unit trays of pinned carabas of the species Carabas gorii from the Neon Biorepository insect collection. And so I want to talk today about three ways we can think about specimens in collections, about preservation, practicality, and presentation. So let's think about preservation. These are pinned insects, and these should last if they are not gotten to by other insect pests or humidity and fungus for hundreds of years in a museum. And we have examples of this um, going back for at least about 250 years or so. Um, so these are should be around for decades and centuries to come for future generations of researchers. And so when we're thinking about um, preservation, there are a number of things we do, right? This is an archival uh, unit tray um, without, with acid-free, lignin-free paper. Uh, these are um, pins that are coated with black enamel to try to avoid rust. Uh, but we also want to think about how is the specimen pinned and what position are its legs and antennae. So in this example here, we can see that we have quite a few beetles and they're pretty close together. Um, and we can see that even though they're close together, there's not a lot of overlap of these antennae and legs, or these appendages sticking off the side of the insect. And in fact, if I want to, I can come in here, I can grab this specimen, I can remove it, and there wasn't much of a risk. This antenna right here was kind of close, but I didn't get very close, and these legs are tucked in to that body. And I can also place it back. So that's great. And so one big thing when you think about with specimens is preservation, long term. Are these appendages and the body of this insect going to stay intact um, while this unit tray gets moved around and these specimens get pulled out and research happens to them in the future? And we can then take this second example here, um, same species, and we can see that these um, are just a little bit less neat, perhaps. And so we see the, like the antenna sticking out here and these legs. Um, and so one issue we run into is that we weren't really able to utilize the side of this unit tray because these specimens required a lot of room um, to place in here. Um, but that's because if we pull this out, we can't really put it in close here because it's going to hit those legs. And inevitably, um, we can already see damage such as some of these specimens, they're missing the ends of their antennae. In fact, most of them are. Um, and some are missing... Uh, tarsi and bits of their legs as well. So we can think about preservation long term and, and how we tuck in the appendages on these insects is very important. We can also look at example of smaller specimens. Um, so these are different species here, but these are both very nicely mounted uh, specimens. And so here we can see these are all point mounted, these Selenophorus um, beetles. They're glued onto points. And we see these very nice, neat labels under them. And in fact, just by tilting them, you can actually read under there. You can see the determination label. You can see the, um, the, the sample ID number underneath. This is great. Um, but we can also look at then here this group. And we actually can't quite read. These are actually Terosticus species. But these labels are just a little bigger. And we see we have white space around the outside. And so while these specimens are pinned very nicely, with these extra large labels, um, we're still not risking a lot of damage, but see to pull, um, say, a specimen like this out of here, it's easy for this label to go and catch on that antenna if I'm not careful. And so label size and placement can be just as important for preservation. And we also want to think about practicality. Um, from this, you know, practically, this is going to take more time as we prepare to cut this down a little bit closer. But there are some steps we can take in printing the labels out so that there's less um, physical cutting elements that we have to do to our labels. Um, but as we're thinking about practicality, um, both of these are, are looking, you know, pretty similar. But as another example, these agonum specimens, again, these are all pinned nicely. Um, and we can see that here, these top labels are a bit larger, and um, that's because there were some handwritten uh, information on those labels. Now, this probably saved this person some time in being able to handwrite that, but we see that it results in a larger label 
than some of these down here. And we still see that then there's some extra um, space that we could have trimmed off of some of these labels. And that's actually gonna affect how many specimens we can fit in a single unit tray, and then how many specimens we can fit in our collection as a whole. So practicality is definitely something we have to um, think about as well. Uh, but also, as we're thinking about practicality, what about the practical use of these to future researchers? So coming back to this example, we can actually see under here. If I'm an, a researcher who comes here in 10 years, I can pick these up and it's easy for me to see and read and I can look underneath and find um, these the, the sample ID number, the catalog number on those yellow labels underneath, and that's great. Here, I'm probably gonna have to start pulling specimen by specimen out and looking at the labels underneath because I'm not really able to see them. Um, we also can think about presentation. Now this is perhaps the least important bit of our collections, but it's nice to have something that looks good. So here's an example from my own collection. These are darkling beetles, a different family um, of beetles. But you can see that, that these are all just kind of nice and neat and uniform. Their legs and antennae are mostly tucked up under their body. You can get them in pretty close to each other and you're not going to rip anything off. In fact, if you take this off, you can see all of those um, tarsi are actually tucked up underneath the beetle for protection. Um, so there is a preservation element there as well. But that looks maybe professional um, and psychologically kind of shows value to the collection, even though um, it may not be more valuable than something else. This is an example from our teaching collection here at Arizona State University, same group of beetles. And you can just see that there is maybe less attention given to these specimens. And so it just gives a very different look. Again, this is much less important than the scientific usefulness and the preservation of these samples long term. Um, but these are just three things we want to think about um, when pinning insects. And in future videos, we'll talk about tips and techniques for um, pinning beetles so that they do look um, as nice as possible, that they are practical, that it's not going to take you extra time, but also that they will be well preserved for future generations of scientists to use.